This video will focus on physical activity, sport and cultural identity. Specifically, we'll look at the role of competition, links to cultural identity, relationships to health and ways of thinking about the body. And after this video, you'll be asked to research physical activities or sports to determine their cultural significance for particular groups. Culture can be considered the ideas, customs and social behaviour of a particular people or society. And it's important to note that different cultures will have different values, beliefs and customs. Sport can be an identifying feature of culture and in Australia, people like to get out and support their favourite team, their state or the nation. And they like to show their patriotism, love and pride for the nation. And people love to see Australia do well and we're happy to be an underdog against much larger nations. Australians see sport as a competition, survival of the fittest, but also an opportunity to have fun with friends and to socialise. And some cultures, particularly our own, value competition as vital in the socialisation process of its people. Other cultures, on the other hand, see cooperative activities and the maintenance of health as important. And some cultures recognise the physical, social, emotional, mental and spiritual dimensions as they relate to sport. And other cultures, such as our own, recognise more so the physical and social dimensions. In terms of the role of competition and its relationship to culture, it's important to understand Western cultures and Eastern cultures and how they might value sport differently. When we think about the Western world, it includes countries of Europe as well as many countries of European colonial origin in the Americas and Oceania, such as the United States of America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, Brazil. And these countries have broad links to Greco-Roman and European traditions and religions such as Christianity. If we think about the Eastern world or Eastern culture, these are nations or countries that have broad links to Asian or Middle Eastern cultures and their links to religion may be through Islam, Buddhism or Hinduism. These cultures value sport in different ways. And if we just look at the image, you can see that in the United States, you've got three very large sports that dominate the, the sporting landscape. Similarly in Australia and around the world, it's pretty clear to see that the Western world appears to value competition and sport very, very highly. And it's important to note that Western cultures and countries see sport as valuable for preparing people to live and work in a capitalist system based on competition, whereas Eastern cultures may link sport and physical activity with the mind, body and spirit. Even in our own indigenous culture, we see sport being linked to building kinship, creating social cohesion and the development of mind, body and spirit. So we can see the Eastern influence on Australia's indigenous culture. The Olympics is a key part of Western culture and it helps, to, helps us to understand the role of competition. The Olympics originated in ancient Greece 3,000 years ago and were revived again in the 19th century. It has become the world's most important competition for sport. And you can clearly see that it is a competition or an idea that comes out of the Western world. But we have seen China and other Eastern tradition countries become sporting powers. And you can see the importance of sport in building their national identity. And we can say the same about Japan, who has a history of martial arts. And you can see sumo wrestling, which is considered the national sport of Japan, quite popular. And these martial arts have instilled notions of rank and order. But more recently, we've seen Japan um, accept and adopt westernized sports as part of their sporting landscape. So you can see this shift where the role of competition has become important across the world. If we look at Taekwondo more specifically, it has its origins in Asian martial arts. And you can see that Taekwondo is 
underpinned by five tenets. And these five tenets, courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and indomitable spirit, are what guides people who take part in this sport. And you can see that it's not so much about competition. It's about the self, and it's about developing personal skills. But we can see as we move over to look at how Taekwondo has spread and become a more global sport. In America, they have adopted the five tenets and they have added one more, which is victory. And this aligns with increased levels of competition for the sport around the world as it has spread across the world, particularly into more westernized nations. It is a sport now that has been included in the Olympics. But that sixth tenet of victory really shows that for Americans, competition is very, very important, as it is in Australian culture as well. In Australia, after World War II, we saw many, many migrants come to Australia and they brought with them their love for football and they set up their own clubs that related back to their own culture. Marconi with the Italians and Sydney United with the Croatians. And they set up these clubs to connect back to their culture, but also you can see the importance of competition that was brought with them, of course, with the National Soccer League being developed as well. In terms of links to cultural identity, you can see that most countries have sports that they feel identify them as a people. And you can see the list of national sports as we go through. Soccer is the national sport for Croatia, Greece and Italy. Pacific Islanders and New Zealanders consider rugby to be their national sport. In Australia, as I mentioned, migrant groups have formed sporting social clubs to reinforce their cultural identity. So the Marconi Stallions and Sydney United. Traditional games such as bocce in England were played as a means of keeping links with the home country. And of course, cricket is Australia's national sport. Irish rugby fans follow their team passionately around the world and in Australia with strong cultural ties to Ireland. It's an opportunity for people of Irish descent to come out and support their team and reconnect with their heritage. And we've seen supporters get behind their nation at World Cups, particularly with this image, the Rugby League World Cup, saw Pacific Island fans come out and support their nation. And of course, the war cries were very popular as they preceded the matches. We had the Indigenous All-Stars war cries as well to inspire their people. And of course, as mentioned, bocce is a sport that is played regularly by Italian migrants and to help them connect back with their culture and heritage. In terms of relationships to health, it's important to understand that health and the importance of physical activity varies between different cultures. Western cultures view sport more as entertainment and social interaction rather than the maintenance of good health. But we see some cultures value activities like yoga as a way of connecting their health and their spiritual improvement. And Asian cultures encourage people from an early age to adopt activities such as Tai Chi and the martial arts in order to maintain good health. In terms of thinking about the body, uh, it's important to understand the traditional view of the sporting physique and the modern view of the sporting physique. And this has changed over time. But traditionally, if we look at Western culture, Western ideas about the body have been dominated by ancient Greek and Roman ideas of the body beautiful. And this ideal represented by the perfect physique of classical sculptures, for example. And as we go through, we see the different views of the body when we look at statues from the East and from the West. And likewise, when we look at medical drawings, we see a varying view of what the body should look like. It is seen that in the Western world, the body is regarded with less reverence and we have a, a big fast food culture. And so the rate of lifestyle diseases is much higher in Western nations. And when we think about cultural traditions, we think about different cultures have different ideas of physical beauty. And this has an impact on the way people view the body in these particular cultures. In terms of sport, we've seen stereotypes 
influence participation and we've seen sports labelled as masculine and feminine and we've seen women labelled and stereotyped for partaking in sports that might be considered male dominated and we've seen diet and exercise being used by males and females to alter their body to conform to particular images that have been presented in the media and this sometimes has led to athletes developing a skewed idea of what their body should be and and this projects into the society so the society develops an image of what the ideal sports body or athlete should look like and we think about different cultural backgrounds and we think about how some cultures might not allow uh, females to participate in sport as such and we see that Australian society is moving towards the promotion of mixed sex competition, but also the inclusion of females in more male dominated sports. And we can see that girls of cultural backgrounds who would not normally take part in some sports that might be male dominated, we're seeing that society is becoming far more accepting of females participating in contact sports, for example. It's important from here that you're able to research physical activity in sports to determine their cultural significance for particular groups. So you may like to research sports such as football, uh, martial arts such as taekwondo to determine their cultural significance and their origins and history. Thanks very much for listening.